All right, so I know what you're probably thinking. This is one really big controller. But what if I told you this is actually one really small PC? Um, even my girlfriend's little brother walked in here the other day and he's like, why is your controller so big? But I had to tell him, hey, this isn't actually just a controller. This is the Techno Pocket Go, and it is a handheld gaming PC. Now imagine these handheld PCs just without a screen. That is basically what you get with the Techno Pocket Go. As far as the actual device that holds all the components for the PC. The screen comes in the form of these AR glasses, and they're called the Pocket Vision. And Techno did not shy away from making these look like they came straight out of Cyberpunk. People will notice that you have these on and that you're watching something or playing something. They look absolutely futuristic. Like some other XR AR glasses that I've tried, these also include myopia diopters to adjust per eye. This lets you basically control the clarity of the image per eye. So you've got this nose piece here, and I don't think there are any other nose pieces included with the packaging. I know on other glasses that I've used, it's included different shaped nose pieces because people have different shaped noses. But this one here is just set on the device. You can actually adjust it, lower it, or higher it to see if uh, it helps fit on your face better. Now, one thing I will say that's kind of a bummer about these glasses are the proprietary cable that is attached to the glasses, which means if something happens to this cable, it pretty much affects the entire pair of glasses. Keep in mind, these are prototypes, so there's still room for them to improve some of these things. I've never been in so early on a product that even the packaging still had some work to do. Obviously, they do have the intentions to correct the typo in the future. And if you were wondering, yes, the glasses and the handheld are part of the same packaging. Both products even get their own hard shell cases, which is awesome. It even has a leather strap. A little techno branding here on the zipper. The Pocket Go case is my favorite. You get everything you need in here. So you get this nice USB-C cable. You get a cleaning cloth. I believe this is a 65 watt power brick here too charge your device. So something pretty neat about this device specifically is that it uses a, ba a removable battery. So inside here, you get two slots in the case to put 250 watt hour batteries. And mine came with one, but I think it's awesome that you can actually remove the battery from this device. And not just that, you can continue using the handheld without the battery inside as long as it's plugged into a power source. That is actually kind of insane, and it makes the device so much lighter. The best part about removable batteries is that if something happens to this battery, you can just get a new one, pop it back in, and that's it. You don't have to go about unscrewing anything. You can just literally take this cap off and put your battery in there. And if you've got more than one, you can literally just swap them out when one dies, which is great as well. There it goes. So when you put the glasses on, you've actually got a 215 inch micro OLED display in front of you. It kind of feels like you're sitting in a movie theater in front of a giant screen. So I wear actual glasses and I can choose to use these and try to adjust the diopters here to get the clearest uh, image possible without wearing my glasses. And I can still see since this screen is so close to me. Now, if I do want the clearest image possible, I do have to wear my glasses, but I can actually wear my glasses and sit these on top of them and kind of adjust the nose piece here. It's still a doable thing if you're a glasses wearing person. Uh, it's not something you should be super concerned about. You can still use it this way. It's not something that's super uncomfortable off the bat, but I assume if you're gonna use these for long periods of time, it will become slightly uncomfortable. It's kind of crazy to think that you could just take these two things with you anywhere you're going and you'll have an entire gaming PC with you. Now you're probably wondering what actually makes this possible and well inside of this controller there's actually an AMD Ryzen 7 8840HS, a pretty solid processor for a device like this. You're going to be getting an experience closer to something like the Ally or the Legion Go. It's also got 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage, and it's equipped with Windows 11. Now, what is it like actually using this thing? Well, 
Controller wise, the controller actually feels pretty good. I think that these triggers actually extend further out than normal triggers do. It looks kind of crazy, but it doesn't feel that crazy. It actually feels good. You've got these tactile mouse clicky A, B, X, Y buttons. The sticks actually feel really smooth and they're Hall Effect um, thumbsticks as well as the triggers. And the D-pad is like one that you would find on the Xbox like Elite controller or something. Ergonomics wise, it feels pretty comfortable and not so different from using a traditional controller and slightly more comfortable than using one of the handheld PCs with the screen on it just because your hands are not as far apart as they would be on those handhelds. This feels more traditional, more normal. Now I did have some minor frustrations when using this device at first because I was, you know, I, I thought I was gonna plug this in and I was just gonna be ready to go, but this is, at the end of the day, a Windows 11 device, and this is a controller, so obviously I was bound to encounter some issues. For instance, when I first started using this, it put me on a screen where I needed to use a keyboard, and I didn't have a keyboard plugged in. Now, there is a way to pop a keyboard up when using the software um, part of this, but the software is actually a little bit wonky and I think they could use some work. Although you do have some quick menu buttons here on the controller and a controller to desktop mode button as well. I'm not sure what this bottom button does here. I think it has something to do with gyro and the glasses. I'm not sure if it's a feature that's ready yet, hence prototype. But yeah, it was slightly frustrating having to get past certain screens that required a keyboard and I didn't have access to a keyboard. So I ended up just taking the glasses off, plugging this device in to my monitor via USB-C, which is actually really awesome, and I'll get into that in just a moment. But I did end up connecting a Bluetooth uh, mouse and keyboard to the device so that I can navigate a little bit easier, at least for the time being. There was a point where I just ditched the mouse and keyboard and I was able to play no problem once I did whatever updates I needed to do, and I was able to just jump into my games without needing the mouse and keyboard anymore. But that's just something that happens with Windows devices in general. Even the early days of the Steam Deck, it was a frustration that I encountered. It is something that can be even more frustrating if you don't have immediate access to a mouse and keyboard near you. <laughs> I really think something like this would truly benefit from an OS like SteamOS, where it's meant to be used on a controller on a handheld device, where you are not supposed to be navigating menus with mouse and keyboard. I could absolutely see people downloading SteamOS on here and navigating that way and just having an easier time opening up their games and navigating menus and things like that for sure. Now this configuration here is the 512 gigabyte model, but there is room for expansion via an SD card here. And you also get an extra USB-C up top as well as a headphone jack. There's also audio that comes out of the glasses and typically the people that are around you, if you have anyone around you, um, can't really hear what you're listening to or watching, which is pretty nice. Now in my experience, aside from the navigating menu issues and needing a mouse and keyboard or anything like that, actually playing games on this was very cool. I've always kind of liked the idea of playing with XR AR glasses on. I've done it in the past with my other handhelds and another pair of glasses, and this is no different simply because it is a much more immersive experience blocks out everything around you. You can still kind of see your peripherals, but when you're really just paying attention to what you're doing in the game or if you're watching something, it's really a lot more immersive because you're just focusing on that one thing right in front of you. Techno preloaded this thing with games like Stray, Cyberpunk, Stardew Valley, Battlefield 5. Playing Cyberpunk while wearing these glasses felt like the only appropriate way to play the game just because of what the game is about and because of how I was playing the game. It was so fitting. And performance wise, I was sitting there in my head trying to think like, Cyberpunk could hardly run on the PS5 when it first came out and I'm running the game now off of a controller. That's really impressive. I did play a little bit of Forza and same thing. The game ran really well. I was running at 60 frames per second and I was driving around, everything looked really good. And that concept just wouldn't leave my mind. <laughs> the fact that I'm playing off of a controller essentially. I had never actually played Stray before but this time I plugged this into my portable monitor and any thoughts of performance or the idea of the PC being in the controller all of that went away and I was just having fun enjoying the game taking it all in 
And at the end of the day, that's really what gaming is about. I hate when people make things about how high the frames are, how good the performance is. Although this is capable of giving you some pretty solid performance. The best part about playing on any device is when you can forget what you're actually playing on and you're just enjoying the game for what the game is and that's kind of what happened there it was actually a great feeling just because sometimes especially as a content creator or someone that plays different games on different devices you kind of test the game and that's pretty much it you just like set the game off to the side or you aren't really paying attention to the game itself you're paying attention to the metrics to the performance to the frames all these things and you kind of forget that you're playing a game that's supposed to be telling you a story or entertaining you in some way. With these handhelds, I've always tried to make the point that no matter what, as long as the game's playable and enjoyable, that is the main takeaway there. Playing in this form factor is supposed to be like this futuristic concept, and when you're actually doing it, when you're actually playing a game with the glasses on, which by the way, the glasses also know when you're wearing them and when they're not. There is a sensor right here dead in the middle. But when you're actually playing, whether it's connected to a monitor or if you're playing on the actual glasses or even plugged into a big TV or whatever screen you're using and you start to realize like, I'm just playing using a controller and a screen or I'm just playing using the controller and some glasses, you kind of forget that there's an entire PC inside this remote. It's a very minimal and futuristic approach and I really like that about this device and about what Techno is going for here with something like this. It's pretty ambitious and I could see in the future this becoming a thing where we don't have these large tower PCs anymore. We kind of just have this thing we can take with us. Now there's nothing wrong with looking for visual fidelity and high-end graphics, but if that's sort of the thing you're looking for, then you might want to look towards um, higher end PCs and just bigger rigs, better rigs, better processors and graphics cards. That might be something that's more up your alley rather than expecting something like this handheld or any of the other handhelds that I've covered to provide that experience for you. When you're looking at these, I think the main thing you should be focusing on is, is the game playable? Is the game enjoyable? Which is why I don't like reviewing games for their performance but rather their playability and fun factor. And I think Techno definitely pulled that off. They made me forget that I was playing on this device. Although it was an afterthought or a thought in the back of my mind while I was playing at certain points, I think at the end of the day, they allowed me to get fully immersed into whatever I was doing. And to me, that's an accomplishment on their end. I would also like to sincerely apologize to Techno for taking so long to create this video and put it out there but I did promise I would get around to this video. I do actually enjoy using this device. And for those of you that don't know, this is part of a Kickstarter project. So as far as pricing and things like that go, well, it's Kickstarter. But if you do wanna support their ambitious vision for gaming, I will leave their link and information in the description below. But yeah, once again, thank you Techno for trusting me and allowing me to cover this cool new tech. But yeah, the Techno Pocket Go, pretty interesting and unique device. If you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns, feel free to leave those in the comment section below. Remember, you can also join my Discord. I'm pretty active on there when I remember to be answering people's questions. And if you just want to share anything, I'll be in there to see it eventually. Hopefully you found this video informative or entertaining. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace.